This is the first gun that I ever shot. It's a Taurus Millennium Pro PT-140. Now, Taurus found out that this was the first gun I ever shot, and so they said, hey, we'll send you the new version of that gun. And so they sent me this, the Taurus G3C chambered in 40. So in the video where I talked about the first gun I ever shot, I mentioned that the fact that it was chambered in 40 probably wasn't the best idea for it being the first gun I ever shot. A lot of that was due in part to the fact that the Millennium Pro PT-140 was kind of a snappy gun. 40 inherently is just a snappy round. So when Taurus sent me the G3C, I was like, I wonder how it's going to handle the recoil comparatively to the PT-140. So I'm just gonna get straight to that because that to me was the most important part. Because what I'm trying to figure out is, should this have been the first gun I ever shot compared to the PT-140? Because if this handles the recoil better, I probably would have even better time and then I would have been a better gun tuber and it's been better shooter and just better all around. Makes no sense, but whatever. No. Before you finish watching this video, a word from our sponsor. Have you ever thought about making a living in the firearms industry? If you enjoy gun repair, ballistics, and learning about firearms, Sonoran Desert Institute's online courses might just be a good fit for you. To find out more, visit sdi.edu or call 480-999-4767 today. All the ammo used in this video is brought to you by Nosler, maker of the most innovative, most accurate, and most effective bullets and ammunition in the industry. It doesn't handle the 40 from a recoil standpoint that much better than the PT-140. However, what it does do is the ergonomics. The ergonomics on this gun make it so that you can control the 40 recoil impulse on this gun much better. It does actually handle the 40 round a little bit better than the PT-140. You can technically only do so much with a gun this size. It's a, comp it's a compact gun, holds 10 rounds of 40. But this grip texture right here, this beautiful grip texture, right? It's really aggressive in a very good way. And what it does is it kind of helps you improve your grip on the gun a lot better. Then you have this kind of ledge here with a pinky thing here, which kind of creates a fulcrum effect. Well, like kind of like a cinch down fulcrum effect, if that makes any sense. And so I feel like I have a better control of this firearm than I did with the PT-140. And what that does and what that gives me, and then you also have a pretty damn good bore axis on this gun as well. So what that does is it allows me to shoot and handle the 40 in a way that I couldn't with the PT-140. So instantly, I love the ergonomics on this gun a lot better than PT-140. PT-140 was kind of smooth, kind of a slick feeling gun. I gotta say, the improvement in the bore access plus the ergonomics, um, I'm pretty sure the double captive spring uh, guide, rod, guide rod in here, or spring in here, uh, the double captive spring in here also does a good job of taming the 40 all over. So in general, the answer really is yes but it's a culmination of all the different aspects of the gun coming together and just being a better feeling gun all the way around, making me able to control the impulse of the 40 a lot better. Now, let's talk about looks. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm kind of cheating on the Millennium Pro PT-140 largely because that was such a iconic gun for me because of it being the first gun I ever shot. So saying that that one looks better than this is kind of hard for me to do. Now, from a look standpoint, I, I do think I'd have to go with the G3C. The G3C is, I'm not gonna call it a sexy, best looking gun in the world. What it does, it just exists. It just is. It's a, it's, a, it's a gun that you look at it and it's a very purpose-driven gun. And that's a bad thing if you're talking about a gun you're paying in excess of $500, $600 for. However, when you're talking about a gun that's coming in the two to $300 range, this, this, that's saying something. That's saying a lot actually, because it doesn't look like a $200, $300 gun. I can look at this gun and easily think that it's somewhere in the four to $500 range with respect to just aesthetics, just the way that it looks, because it does look like a quality gun. It doesn't look like a cheap gun. Some cheap guns look like cheap guns. This doesn't look like a cheap gun. Now, I'm not gonna say it's gonna win the Miss America tactical beauty pageant, but it's, it's a gun, I look at it and I go, yeah, cool looking gun. 
Another thing about the D3C is the trigger. The trigger is very different. It is a double action trigger on a striker fired pistol. So what it does, and I know you're asking yourself, why do you need a double action trigger on a striker fire? Well, it's because it gives you two strike capabilities. What that means is if I pull the trigger and this one's gonna go off, and then I come out and I pull the trigger again and nothing happens, I can let it out, pull it, and pull the trigger again. So I get a double strike capability on a round just in case for some reason the first time it doesn't go off and then I get another strike. Now, truth be told for me, that is useless. The reason it's useless for me is because the moment I pull the trigger and nothing happens, I'm going to, I'm going to tap, rack, and then get back on the gun. So for me, for me, the double strike capabilities is kind of moot because it's not something that I'm gonna do because I already been ingrained into my training. Anytime that gun goes dead, I tap and I rack. That's just automatic. So for me, it's gonna be a lot faster than going bang, bang, click, click. Oh, okay, boom, and try to figure that out. So, but, 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 in single action mode, so once the gun is actually chambered, you have a round chambered, and you actually go to shoot the gun, from a trigger standpoint, it is a long trigger. You have this long take up, because remember, it's a double action initially. Long take up, boom. And then you hit this wall, and then the gun goes off, and then you have this reset that's right there. So, in dry fire, if you were to dry fire this gun, this trigger sucks, be honest with you. It sucks because it's gonna feel long. And you're like, why is this long trigger on this gun? But then, go to live fire and you actually fire the gun. And then you realize it's actually kinda nice. And here's why. Now, it depends how you like your triggers, but for me, I like it. Because here, I get this long take up, boom, I'm on that wall. So I know any, any more amount of pressure, that gun's going off. Now, now, from a reset standpoint, boom, that's your reset. It's not that long. It's not long at all, actually. It's incredibly short. And I'm back on the trigger, boom, right? But then if I let it all the way out, you see yeah, that's, that's a lot of slack, but that slack for me, I like it because it's kind of like, it's like a trigger training wheel for me, like, or like a, a trigger, I don't know how to, I don't know, I can't come up with a term for it, but it, it guides me right into the wall and I know exactly where it is. Boom, right there, right? So then even if I don't slack out, I mean, even if I do not shoot to reset and just under recoil, reset the trigger, gun goes off, back on the trigger. Done, just like that. So if I'm shooting this gun under live fire, I'm not even really noticing the long take up on the trigger because the reset is so short. So like I said, under dry fire, the trigger's gonna suck. Under live fire, the trigger's actually pretty damn good. So, as far as the features on this particular gun, now, I know that there's a version of this gun that has a place for your optic cutout. This one doesn't have that. However, on this gun, you get all the features that you generally want on this gun, but there's one feature on this gun that a lot of people hate. It's the safety. They don't like it. Now, let me step back for a second and talk about that. So, from a safety standpoint, it's this weird thing that happens when you get into the gun space. When you were brand new into the gun world, and you start getting your gun for, guns for the first time, you love safeties. You're like, man, this has a safety on it. Gives you all warm and fuzzy on the inside. Safety! And then as you start to kind of go down and deeper into the darker parts of the online gun community, you start hearing people bemoaning and detesting the idea of having a safety on a gun. They have all of these scary stories about, you're gonna pull your gun, and then you're gonna realize your safety's on, but you already tried to shoot, and now you're dead. Because you didn't take your safety off. Because you forgot to take the safety off. And there is some credence to that, actually. I've actually done that in a training before where I was, running a, I was running a 92 Beretta and I was supposed to go through the house and clear the house and I saw a threat, I tried to pull the trigger, gun didn't go off. You wanna know why? I had the safety on because I didn't train to the safety. So that is a real thing. As much as I'm making fun of it, it's a real thing. If you have a gun with the safety on it, you gotta remember you gotta train to the safety. Now, once you've got that dialed in into your muscle memory, it's, it's actually more automatic than you think. But for the large, large population of people in the gun world, they don't like safeties. They feel like something, another thing for it to go wrong, it just becomes an issue. They accidentally goes on when you want it off, all of these things. However, if you're one of those people that love safeties and there's nothing wrong with that, just understand you have to train to it. It has a safety on the gun. It is what it is. Now, considering the price point, this is going to be a gun by and large for a lot of first time gun buyers. And like I said before, a lot of first time gun buyers want a safety on their gun which is fine. I don't think you need to bemoan these people or make fun of these people. Like, 
it's a, it's a progression. We all started somewhere. So let them transition. They'll get to a point where they're like, okay, I don't want a safety on this gun anymore. And then they'll get guns without safeties. But I have reasons for wanting safeties on my guns. I have safeties on some guns, some guns I don't. And I have very specific reasons for that. And I'll do a video on that later. But from a feature standpoint, you definitely have, you get the 10 round magazine, like I talked about before, the great ergonomics on this gun. The ergonomics on this gun are actually really, really good. Um, and then on top of that, you have this witness hole here to determine whether or not the gun is actually loaded. And these sights, these sights are a rather unexpected treat. And the reason I say that is because when you just look at them, they look like any old boring sight. But under fire, when you're behind the gun, they actually look like, like they're actually really good, right? You have this blacked out serrated rear, and then you have the white dot in front. And when you pull, when you go to the gun, it sits there, aims perfectly. I mean, it's, it's rather enjoyable if you ask me. Um, and then on top of that, you have these serrations on the slide. Um, the ones back here are pretty damn functional. The ones up front are kind of useless to me, honestly. I think they're just for show. I mean, I guess you could make the argument that I could, you know, press check the gun using the serrations on the gun. But by and large, eh. And then you have a little rail up front for your light. A little doohickey lights for all you people who like to put lights on little guns. I'm one of those people. If I'm honest, if I'm honest, and I'm always honest, even when I'm lying, it makes no sense. But between the first gun I ever actually shot and this gun, I don't think it would have made a difference in terms of my projection into the gun space, but I definitely would have had a better shooting experience with this gun. So instead of it being love at second shot, is which is what I call that PT-140, this would have been love at first shot because it just does a better job of allowing me to handle the 40 caliber recoil a lot better because my first shot with the old one, I was terrified because it was so snappy and jumpy and all that. And then the second shot, when I understood what was going on, I could better manage it. This right here is more intuitive. I can get on the gun, I can shoot the gun, and it feels great in my hand. So I have to say, I would have definitely had a much better experience with this versus the 140. Either way, I'm just glad it happened. I am. And even though y'all had nothing to do with it, y'all had no control over it, thank you, Taurus, for making the PT-140 Millennium Pro because I don't know, necessarily know if y'all hadn't made it, then my friend wouldn't have bought it and then he wouldn't have asked me to go to the range to shoot for the very first time and then none of you people watching this video right now would see my beautiful sexy face out here on this beautiful gun range with this gun in my hand peter's gagging right now f off peter guns aren't political that's why i need your help getting this message to spread on youtube by clicking the thumbs up button leaving a comment to let me know what you think of the video then subscribing to the channel but most importantly click that bell symbol for products featured in this video click the links in the description